Hi folks and welcome to today's video, working out with a herniated disc full body part two. Now, I produce a lot of good content for those folks out there suffering with herniated discs, bulging discs, sciatica nerve pain, low back pain issues. If that's you, then hit that subscribe button. You'll be notified I've got some great content for you guys to get back on the road to recovery. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. So folks, today I'm gonna to go over the second workout that I used to do uh, when I was coming back from my herniated disc. If you've not checked out the first video, um, it's gonna pop up at the end of this one, okay? It's also in the description of the link for you guys. Go and check it, it's two, it's gonna be two full body workouts, all right? Now, the reason I'm doing this, people have asked me many, many times, like Colin, when you went back to the gym, what did you do? Did you throw yourself back into squats, back into deadlifts? No, I did not. I basically undertook a very well thought out program, which got me back to that strength again. I worked a lot on my core work, uh, unilateral work, building up both sides of my body, all the while protecting my disc, protecting my back during these workouts. Now, I want to jump right into this. So for you guys coming back into the gym, okay, I would spend five to seven minutes using a piece of cardio equipment to get the body uh, warmed up, get the blood pumping, get the muscles warm, create a little bit of sweat. Um, usual choices, upright cycle, recumbent cycle, um, cross trainer, that kind of thing is gonna be suitable. Or of course the treadmill as well, okay? Then once you come off, you're gonna spend a couple of minutes doing some mobility. Now, in most gyms you will find a band, some sort of broomstick type device like this here. And you just wanna open up the shoulders eight to 10 times, you may have heard a click there, that's my shoulder. Eight to 10 times backwards and forwards, opening up the chest and shoulders. Eight to 10 times, then you can switch, slightly more mobility move. Right arm comes across, down the back, left over the top. So you go one way, eight to 10 times. Then you would switch direction eight to 10 times. And again, you can use a band or a broom handle for this. Now, likewise, just open up the hips a little bit as well. So I would use a bench for support, uh, instead of a barbell, instead of a rack. We're gonna take the knee, we're gonna bring it across the inside, open and place it down. Cross the inside, open it up, place it down. Just an easy eight to 10 smooth circles. Then you're gonna change direction and you're gonna go outside and bring it in, outside, bring it in. 10 on each side, 10 both directions. Then just to finish the small bit of mobility, I would use the edge of a step, edge of this bench, for example. Just a really simple 10 body weight squats, roughly 45 degrees, touch and come back up. This gets a little bit more blood flow into the region, gets the body ready for what you're about to do. Makes it more specific to the actual exercises. So just a quick rundown of what you're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing three sets, different exercises. We're doing an A group, a B group and a C group. You'll be doing four sets of the first two exercises. This first set of each is gonna be an extra warm up. Then you do three sets of the other groups. I'll explain more as we go. But the first two exercises are going to be a one arm line mine press and a one legged step up. See you in a second. Okay. Okay guys, so we're gonna to start today with what's called the one arm line mine press. Now this requires a barbell, as you can see here. Now there is a specific attachment, which is on the bottom of this platform here. However, I will show you another way to do this, okay? So don't panic, all right? There's no way you can do this. You basically find a corner in the gym. So if I didn't have this, for example, if you look down here at the platform, you see a corner. And I can easily stick it into the corner and it's gonna do exactly the same thing. It's gonna provide stability for this barbell, okay? All right, so. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you're right-handed, your left hand's gonna be first, right leg forward. I'm gonna be pushing the barbell up in front of me into my midline, back here, push. Now, this creates a lot of stability through your core. You have to engage your core to stop yourself from dropping down, okay? It's similar to the one-arm press we did last week on the bench. And of course, when you put it down on the ground, good spine hygiene. So, it's gonna be 10 to 15 repetitions on each side, 
okay? Use the non-dominate side first like I talk about. You want to use your non-dominate side first, get 10, 12, 15 repetitions, switch to your stronger side, only do the same reps as you did on your non-dominant side, 12, 15. Try to progress the weight 5% every week. Now the thing about this particular first two exercises is you're doing four sets, okay? We're using the first set as a warm-up set. So maybe you just use the bar, okay? You do 10, 15 repetitions on each side, and then you move on to the step up. No rest, do your step up, one set, 10 to 15 times, that's your warm up. Then you can come back and start your work set itself. Now the work sets are gonna be three sets of each one, then you do this A group first, then you move on to the B group. Now remember, when you warm up for the A group, you don't need to work up for the B the group, your warm up's already done, so you're good to go. All right guys, we're gonna move on now to the step up. So team, we've come off of the one arm landmine press. We're gonna be pairing that with a step up, okay? So during this first set of warm up, we basically come straight from the landmine press, straight to our step up, no rest, finish it, take about 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and then we start the first working set of the landmine press. Now, step up itself, I used in the beginning a very small step. This was just to sort of um, avoid creating too much hip movement, torsion, et cetera, my hips, because that transfers into my pelvis, into my lower back, okay? One of the problems with the step up is a lot of people will often push with the ground leg as they push up, okay? That's incorrect. Technically, you want to be pushing with the leg which is on the step. That's what's called step up, all right? So, to begin with, I would choose a box which is somewhere 10 to 12 inches in height, right? So, you're looking at about 30 centimeters maximum, okay, for those in the metric system. And you want to place your foot at the edge. This could be uh, a box, it could be a small step, and you want to turn the foot slightly out, okay? Get this leg quite close to the box. If I'm, if I'm too far away, then my base, I'm having to push over onto this supporting leg. Get my weight here, so the weight is now over the point of pivot, which is my hip, all right? And chest is up. Of course, I'm not bending forward. Pushing with this leg, I push up, hold for a second, and I come down. When I come down, I don't flump down. I take the landing. Again, take the tension here. Push, hold, come down. Push, hold for a second, and come down. Push, hold, come down. We'd be looking at 10 to 15 repetitions. If you can't do 10, you can do eight. That's perfectly fine. It's always to your individual maximum, okay? But be conscious of pushing all with this leg. Push, hold for that second to stabilize. When you come down, control the descent, land lightly on the opposite leg. 10 to 15, shake off the leg, and then you would, of course, change sides to the other side, okay? 10 to 15, take your 60 seconds rest, and then back to the landmine to finish up your three sets. Remember, we do two warm-up sets, then we got our first work set on the landmine, which is set number two, back here for set two, rest 60 seconds, set three, the landmine, set four, uh, sorry, set three back here, set four, landmine, set four here, finish, move on to the next two. The next two are going to be a inverted barbell row and a Swiss ball hip extension. All right guys, so we've done the A group. We had our one arm landmine press, we had our step up. We're gonna to move to the B group. So B group is gonna be what's called a barbell inverted row. And that's gonna be paired with our Swiss ball, physio ball, two leg hip extension. Now the barbell inverted row, you can use, I'm using a Smith machine here, but you could use the squat rack platform where the barbell is actually laying in the actual rack itself. I'm using the Smith machine here. So you want to be lying underneath the, the bar, chest under the bar. Easier version is knees bent, feet flat. Harder version is going to be legs straight. Hands about old stout said shoulder width apart. Under the bar, pull up. So I'm pulling up, hold for a second, release. Hold for a second, release. The harder version, Legs out in front. Down. Again, do your 10 to 15 repetitions, and then wait 45, 60 seconds, and then we're gonna hit the hamstring exercise. All right, folks, so we've done our first set of the barbell inverted roll. That's gonna be paired with this Swiss ball, uh, physio ball, it's got different names, of course, straight-legged hip extension, okay? so. You, 
requires a ball. You know, down on the floor here, on the mat, of course. I'm just using the bare floor here for demonstration purposes. Now, we're going to put both feet up on the ball there. So my heels are roughly about the middle of the ball, where the line would be in the middle of the ball. Now, hard versus easy. Easier is going to be palms down, arms away from the body. It's going to give us leverage for the next part of the exercise. Harder is palms up, closer to the body, okay? So for beginner's sake, we'll start with palms down, arms away from the body. What we're going to do here, we're going to squeeze the glutes, okay, and then push into the ball with our heels and the backs of our legs as we squeeze the glutes, and we're going to lift our hips up. High as you comfortably can, you feel tension in the back of your legs and your glutes. Hold for one second, come down, touch the floor carefully, and go back up. Don't relax completely at the bottom. Still keep some tension on your, on your glutes and your hamstrings. Just lift up, squeeze and hold, come down, touch the ground, squeeze, hold for a second, and come back down. 10 to 15 repetitions. That'd be set one, and then you go back, of course, to your barbell inverted row, set two, back here, set two, set three, set three. Don't forget to take your 45 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 seconds rest between the exercises. It's very, very important for the body to recover between the sets you're doing, okay? All right, guys, we're gonna move from these two now onto the last three, it's the C group. We're gonna be doing a standing easy bar curl, dumbbell incline uh, tricep extension, and we're gonna side plank as well. All right, so over to them. All right, team, so it's the last group of exercises, the C exercises. And there's three in this little group here. We've got some arms, okay? And we've also got a side plank for the set of obliques and part of your back muscles as well. So I've got, now it's the standing easy bar curl. Now this is an easy bar here, with the easy uh, style. You could use a barbell if there's not an easy bar available, okay? And it's called the standing back against the wall curl. Why? Well, I spoke about this a little bit last time, is when you're doing a free standing curl, there is just the body's natural habit. We want to cheat sometimes. There's more inclination for people to swing, okay? And that can put unnecessary stress on your lower back. However, if we place the shoulders and the back on the wall, even nowhere to swing, yeah? So how I used to do this, I would just stand on my feet, they're maybe about three, four inches off the wall, five inches or so. Barbell was touching the top of my thighs, my shoulder blades were on the wall here, and I would curl in this position, okay? And this, there was no cheating, I couldn't swing the weight. And this keeps it nice and controlled, keeps your spine in a nice neutral position, and avoids any unnecessary lower back stress. So, 10 to 15 repetitions, you would rest 45 to 60 seconds. Then we're going to move on to the opposite side, the triceps here. For this, we're going to do an incline dumbbell tricep extension. Again, I spoke of this last time, but the reason for the incline bench, as opposed to a flat bench, was for how you get on and off the bench. So if I'm on a flat bench, <clears throat> and I've got weights, and I'm having to come up from the very bottom, I'm having to swing myself up, okay? Which can put, again, unnecessary stress on the lower back. And it's this repetitive micro stress, which can sometimes increase that healing time. So I try to remove that, make things easier, more stable, so I'd be healing faster. So for you guys, I'm giving you today, those kind of little secret hints and tips if you want to call them, which basically made my progression a lot faster than maybe normal people. So the incline bench, we just need to lie back in it and we're there. I'm nicely supported. When I come up, it's just a matter of 15, 20 degrees and I'm up, I'm not swinging myself up. So the incline dumbbell press. Now you can kick the dumbbells up. It's above the shoulder here. And I bend at my elbows, I let the dumbbells come down towards my shoulders, not into your head, okay, and push up. And you can count to yourself three, two, one, zero, one push up. Just take a nice controlled descent, push up. One, two, three, and up. One, two, three, and up. Now when you're down, bring it to here, you can sit up and step off, okay? So, again, we take a 45, 60 second rest, and then we move on to the last of the C group, which is going to be the side plank. Now, again, you use a mat for this. I'm just gonna use, again, the bare gym floor. So we're getting down here. Now, you should be at this stage, because this particular workout, 
we're expecting you guys to be roughly four, five, six months in. So you should have been doing your kind of McGill work, side plank stuff. So this next side plank is the harder side plank. So you notice, if you check my feet, I don't have my ankle pushed to the floor. I've actually got the edge of my foot because that gives me something to push into when I leverage myself up, okay? So when I push up, I come up to here and I hold. And you notice I'm a little bit higher than parallel to engage more what's called the quadratus lumborum muscle. It's a lower back uh, muscle runs from your so a thoracic region down to the lumbar and top of the sacrum. And you want to hold this. You want to work probably 20 seconds to begin with, but you want to work up to that minute, okay? Then when you relax, take yourself, bend your knees, bring yourself down, and you swing out of it over to the other side. Now remember, like I spoke about before, when you do unilateral exercises, you want to use the non-dominant side first. So if your right side, your stronger side, use the left side first. If you get 40 seconds on that left side, when you go to the right side, only do 40 seconds on that right side, okay? So you're only doing as much on your dominant side as you achieve on the non-dominant side. It's to help bring up any strength and balances side to side. So if I did 40 seconds, for example, say my, my right was my stronger side, sorry, my right was my weaker side, I did 40 seconds, I'd go into my left, 40 seconds, and then rest, okay? Take your 45, 60 second rest, and then you would go back to Easy bar call. Do that one, rest 60, and I'll keep repeating myself just to make sure you get it. Do your dumbbell tricep extensions, and around you go for your three sets, okay? And that will complete your workout. Probably take you roundabout with the warm up, 45, 50 minutes to complete that workout, and the one I did for you guys last week as well. Now, <clears throat> there will be in the description, I write down the full workout there so you can follow it along, okay? I will be producing a proper guide with videos as well for you guys in the coming months, that's gonna be uploaded on my site. You can also access it probably via YouTube as well. I'm sure you're gonna have lots of comments and questions. If you do, please hit me up in the comment section down below. If you wanna ask me a more personal question, you can send it to my email address, that's also in the description down below. Please don't forget to like and share this video, and of course, subscribe. And I guys, I will see you all next time. Have a great day.